Discover solutions to issues that affect your family and professional life with practical information to help you get past life's adversities. Take a proactive approach to power up your life with Rosalie's expert resources. New Year's resolutions can range from losing weight to growing a nonprofit mission. Whatever the resolution that is to be resolved, we need to begin with a commitment to create the change. According to a study by the Journal of Consumer Research, too much of a good thing, the benefits of implementation intentions, depend on the number of goals. What focus will either have the greatest impact is easier to accomplish, or simply is the one with the greatest chance of success. Did you know 45% of Americans have made New Year's resolutions to wipe the slate clean from last year? By the first week of February, nearly two-thirds, that's 64% of Americans who made New Year's resolutions, broke them. Organizational expert Linda Rothschild has a few organizational tips to stay on track and recharge our resolution. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. What is the best way for consumers to get back on track with a resolution? Well, as you said, many people do fall off their resolutions, break their resolutions by the beginning of February. And I think it takes planning and organizing as well as willpower and commitment to stay on track. So for instance, if your resolutions were to change your diet or exercise more, planning ahead for meals, and scheduling time to go to the gym or take a hike with a friend are tools that will help you stay on track. What can you suggest to help us stay motivated and simplify the process? Well, you want to start with a small project. If you say, I'm going to organize the house today, you're never going to get through it. So start with a small, manageable process, and then you'll feel a great sense of accomplishment when you do it. So the beginning of the year is a great time to Clear out your files, for instance, and make room for this year's paid bills and receipts that are going to come in. Start with room in the drawer and new fresh file folders, and that will help you stay on top of your finances better and help you manage your, your paperwork. And we ultimately save time and money by keeping up with the paperwork and organizing our finances. Um, it's very helpful, especially before tax time. You want to have all your, your papers in order so you'll be able to file on time. What organizational tips can you share to keep us to stay on top of our finances? I've teamed up with Bank of America to share some of their tips for making things easier and more streamlined. So for instance, their mobile bank deposit will help you save time and help you manage your finances. So you are taking a photograph of a check with your smartphone and it automatically goes into your account. You don't even have to go to the bank or stand in line. So finding shortcuts and finding tricks to keep yourself organized is the way to go. Organizing our appearance begins with vowing to take off the pounds we put on from the holidays. Reader's Digest and Editor-in-Chief Liz Vaccarello is here to reveal the breakthrough science behind a new diet that's a healthy weight loss plan. Good morning, Liz. Good morning. Liz, you have 20 years of experience as a health journalist. So why did you write a research-based diet? Well, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Reader's Digest. And as such, you know, health is one of the things that we've always covered. And so I sent my team out and I said, I want to give people fast, easy, research-based, very credible solutions to uh, releasing fat from the body. I want to give people ways, you know, our bodies are clinging to fat. We put on five pounds, we lose two. We, there's, how do we get, how do we release it from our bodies? And we found 12 what we call fat-releasing foods. Um, and the idea here is that there's research behind each and every one of them. Um, that makes weight loss easier, that makes um, shedding calories, burning fat easier for various reasons. And the Digest Diet puts them together in a three-week plan that is the marriage of fast weight loss and healthy weight loss. It's real food, but you get super fast results. You lose anywhere from 21 to 26 pounds in three weeks on the Digest Diet. There are so many diets out there. Why has the Digest Diet found incredible success? 
Well, first of all, there's no gimmicks. There's no fad foods. You're, you're not relying on somebody delivering food to your house. Um, you're not eating fancy food. You're not eliminating whole food groups from your diet. So it's a very doable uh, plan. And we also found research that showed losing weight, a lot of weight, early in the diet. Um, leads to high motivation, first of all, but also physiologically, it helps our bodies lose more weight throughout the course of the plan and keep it off longer. So we structured the three phases of the diet to do just that. Uh, phase one of the digest diet is called the fast release plan. And for four days, you're flooding your body with nutrition. So you're having fast release shakes that incorporate some of the fat releasers like honey instead of sugar, coconut oil, very, very filling, very healthy for you. You're having hearty soups like a quinoa minestrone. And after four days, our test panelists say their cravings are gone and they've lost anywhere from five to eight pounds in four days. Very, very motivating. What are these fat releaser foods you speak of? Well, the, the 12 fat releasers include everything from dairy and lean proteins to vitamin C, um, healthy fats like avocados and olives, very filling, packed with nutrition, very good for you. Foods that have fiber, but the coconut oil, the honey, dark chocolate, and resveratrol that's found in red wine or um, a handful of red grapes. So when you head into the second phase of the diet, all of a sudden you're eating things like turkey sausage meatballs over peppers and spaghetti squash green beans but you're having at the end of every day a glass of red wine or a handful of grapes if you don't drink so that's week two um, week three is called finish strong this is where we're eating a balanced diet you're using one of the 150 recipes from the digest diet cookbook um, that maximize your fat releasers you're feeding your family um, foods that appeal to everybody. I love this apple glazed, um, this apple brined chicken dish, delicious Cajun sweet potato fries. Yes, you're having fries on the diet. And then on the third week of the diet, you start to have um, uh, dessert every night in addition to the red wine and these chocolate chocolate chip cookies again they're using the fat releasers the dark cocoa the honey for a little sweetness and a little bit of fiber with some oats in there so you're eating real food but you're maximizing these fat releasing ingredients so where can we learn more about this effective diet well it's available on digestdiet.com or wherever books are sold Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> All right, Mama's gonna bring it home. Mama's okay. gonna bring it home. Okay. 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 Come on, <laughs> watch this guy. Oh, oh backwards. Oh, Woo! don't. Okay. It went into Bob and Carol's yard. Oh, no? Okay, yeah. here it yeah. goes. Oh, oh my oh. God. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. Yeah, All right, let's see what you can do. Let's go. They might surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Environmental issues, community issues, disability issues, government issues, targeting the issues, disability mentoring, teen reckless driving, hurricane security. Come join me on these issues and more on the Rosalie Archer Show, Thursday, 6.30 a.m. on ION TV. Weight loss resolutions that rely on the buddy system can be very successful. Like the Biggest Loser Season 5 contestants, Jackie and Dan Evans. They join us this morning from beautiful Panama City Beach, Florida, to share their commitment to losing weight and keeping it off. Good morning, Jackie and Dan. Hey, good morning, good morning. Rosalie. Thanks for having us. Jackie, you and Dan lost an amazing 225 pounds during the competition. Is losing weight or maintaining your weight your number one resolution? 
Yeah, I mean, really for us, you know, since the show, I mean, it's, it's always been important for us to, you know, keep our fitness goals in front of us. And even still to this day, you know, one of my big New Year's resolutions going into this year, and, uh, and my mom as well, is we, we plan to keep at least one event on our calendars each month. Th that could be anything from a 5K or a, a triathlon like we did last year, or even half marathon. But, it, you know, having that thing that we can continually look forward to and continually be training for. You've got to set the goals. You have to do it. As a mother and son routine, do you both need each other to stay fit and maintain your goals? Friend, find somebody who's going to help keep you accountable. And, you know, when you don't feel like getting up in the morning and getting to the gym or getting out and doing your run, you got somebody who says, hey, I'm waiting for you. We, we made a commitment together. Let's get there. Let's do it. So what's happening in Panama City Beach? We are in Panama City Beach for the Biggest Loser Run Walk, the inaugural half marathon, which was just a phenomenal event. It really was such a great event. I mean, it was the, the scenery running down the Front Beach Road and getting to see the beach. I mean, it was just so beautiful here So for this much race. fun. And so people from around the country came to run mm -hmm. with us and run, walk, run or walk, just get moving with us. Where can we get more information on the Biggest Loser Runs? Well, you can go to uh, biggestloser.com slash runwalk. You'll see our entire schedule. We are all across the country this year. And of course, right back in Panama City Beach next year for another New Year's resolution race. In Florida, more than one in five adults has type 2 diabetes. And diabetes was the sixth leading cause of death for Floridians. So when you hear the name Kendall Simons, images of a two-time Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers flash by. Kendall signified strength and success on the football field. And Kendall suffers from diabetes. Joining us this morning is the man who jumped into proactive mode to control his sugar and pursue his dream. Good morning, Kendall. All right, thank you for having me. Tell us, how did you handle receiving the diagnosis that you had diabetes? Well, honestly, like every other di di person who's living with diabetes and being a diabetic patient, um, I didn't receive it very well. It's one of those things where I felt like I had enough on my plate at that point in time, dealing with um, athletic injuries and just trying to, you know, make a name for myself and, and, and make a mark on the NFL and adding diabetes to my life. That's something I didn't know anything about. That was tough. How did your life change personally and professionally? Um, personally, making a lot of sacrifices uh, as far as uh, eating habits, uh, the type of rest that I needed taking care of myself uh, physically, learning that you know, the immune system is weaker than other people. Professionally, uh, knowing that diabetes is gonna have an effect on every snap, every second while I'm playing and practicing and, and, and mentally dealing with that. That was to me tougher than the outside life just to adjust to. And that's something that I try to tell people that diabetes taught me more discipline or it's a sports side of it than anything else. You're committed to how important it is to give back to the community, and you inspire others to go out there and do the same and share their stories. Get as much information as you can, and, and definitely weigh all of it out because there's a lot of misinformation out there about diabetes. Uh, we have a, a definitely a great contest going on right now that can supply a lot of information to you and, and you can give back to it. It's the first Noble Law Community Star. You have opportunity to submit your story for some of the things that you're doing, giving back to your local community, as far as being a school teacher, a little league coach, or whatever it may be, that you're doing something positive with your life and, and living with diabetes on top of that. And you can go to novalaw.com and get the information you need to help with, with whatever struggles you may have and then also to submit your story. And at the end of the day, once all the people have submitted their stories, they're gonna pick 10 finalists from those entries. And you have an opportunity to win $5,000 that will be donated on your behalf by Northern Nordisk to a diabetes charity of your choice. Thank you, Kendall, for sharing your story to inspire others to visit novalog.com and share theirs.
A new study by the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry finds that a great smile can be our greatest asset. More when we return. Lead paint poisoning affects one million children today. It's also 100% preventable. If your home was built before 1978, visit leadfreekids.org to learn more. Eating healthier, exercising, and caring for our health is essential for a more confident appearance. But how about our smile? A new study by the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry finds that a great smile can be our greatest asset because a healthy smile creates confidence and makes the most lasting first impression. Dr. George Tyskowski, professor at State University of New York School of Dental Medicine, joins us with tips to create your ideal smile. Good morning, Dr. Tyskowski. Good morning, Rosalie. We worry about our weight, our clothes, our hair, and we forget the look our teeth have when we smile. What dental health routines should we practice daily to create a healthy smile? Well, as you mentioned, Rosalie, it's a critical factor of our appearance, our self-confidence. A smile is a foundation of who we are today and a very, very important principle related to oral health and obviously our, our appearance as well. Uh, first of all, there, what's, what's unique is that the smile is one of the most easiest corrective and maintainable areas of our appearance. So first of all, it's very important to visit your dentist, get routine cleanings where they can clean your teeth, polish them, and if, if elected so, many people request whitening procedures where we can bleach out old stains from coffee, or drinking wine, or other characteristics and create a more vibrant, natural looking smile. So checking with your dentist, keeping on a healthy routine, obviously brushing and flossing, but a preventive maintenance program is a critical foundation of good oral health. Your smile affects your confidence when you walk in the room, right? Oh, absolutely. As you mentioned, the uh, recent studies uh, by the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, your smile is one of the most fundamental features that provide related to your own self-appearance, confidence, and uh, it's an extrusion of who your personality is. So it's a foundation of your overall uh, health, of course. Unhealthy teeth can be distracting and leave a negative impression when we walk in a room. True, and then and people who, uh, who have broken down teeth or stained teeth often reflect internally uh, those characteristics and aren't as outgoing, uh, aren't as vocal, aren't as focused in their work and profession, and so it's a complete enhancement and uh, makeover of your entire personality. Some options you can suggest to create a healthy smile that's not hugely expensive and painful. Well, as I mentioned before, they're very simple procedures. First of all, by uh, routine cleanings uh, or even a take-home. Uh, whitening kits are available today through your dentist or through uh, pharmacies. Uh, but consult with your local dentist. And then the new trend today is that from a, from a smile appearance uh, point of view, we have new techniques called minimally invasive where we can very conservatively correct malformed teeth and replace defective areas and re realign and recreate a natural looking smile through new technologies like Emacs and other materials which are metal free and provide a very, very lifelike appearance. Uh, just correcting broken down or malpositioned teeth, sometimes teeth are rotated or we have chips or, or breakage and those can be corrected very, very easily by our dentists, again using simple techniques without a lot of reconstruction. Where can our viewers learn more to get that perfect smile and gain more confidence? Obviously check with your dentist, but there's a, a new website called www.smiletothemax.com which relates as far as patients' experiences, how they've highlighted and what life-changing effect, life effects they've had with a new smile. What do you 
you think of advertisers who spend millions of dollars on a 30-second Super Bowl ad? Did they get their money's worth? We have some interesting analysis to share with you when we return. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest, a magical place to enjoy with your family. Ooh. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Super Bowl isn't just the biggest game of the football season, it's a championship for advertisers who spend millions of dollars to win your attention. Automakers purchased significant ad time during the game, but which ones captured the attention of car shoppers? John Kovac, Vice President of Consumer Marketing at Autotrader.com is here with post-game analysis. Good morning, John. Good morning, Rosalie. So which ads worked and didn't work among car shoppers and why? You know, we had winners across the board. All of the models that did run advertising, we saw an uptick in shopper activity, but we had some clear winners that came through. The Hyundai Santa Fe was our number one um, in activity increase, a thousand percent increase um, uh, pre uh, and post comparison after the spot ran. Um, there was the team spot with the kids getting together, the football team to take on the bullies. Um, then we had Kia, which really rounded out number two and number three with the Forte and Sorento with their Respect the Tech and their Babies in Space um, with over 500% increases in shopper activity. So which ones were the most effective? I saw lots of fluff. Y yeah, you know, y you have to have entertainment value with it. You have to have a product that consumers actually want to shop for. And so I would say the Santa Fe, the Forte, and the Sorento really did that well. But then you had some overarching brand advertising that resonated. You had Lincoln, Mercedes, Jeep, and Ram, um, which what we saw was a halo effect. They didn't necessarily advertise a particular model, but their advertising and what it did do is it affected all of their model searches um, right after the spots ran, where we saw you know, upwards of 240% increases in shopper activity. It's more about brand identity that people relate to, right? Absolutely, and you saw that coming through with the Jeep ads, the coming home ad, the farmer's ad with Ram. Um, they're really pulling on those heartstrings, and the car in some cases comes a little bit secondary. These ads have a lasting impact on viewers. You know, in many cases they do. We do see it as a kickoff, really a launch pad for the year and the new models. We see that hourly activity spike continue for several days, sometimes several weeks, and then continue throughout the year. So depending on how the advertisers are following up with their campaigns, um, they'll typically perform quite well. Say we saw the spots going for about $3.8 million um, each 30 second spot. But this year, and we're starting to see more and more of this, the advertisers are getting much more out of the particular spot. It's not just the evening of, they're getting a lot of social activity the week before, they're getting a lot of buzz the week or two after. So they're really making it work hard for the dollars they're spending in the actual game. For those viewers who watch the ad but can't afford to go out and buy a new car, what do they take away from the ads? You know, you walk away with a really good feeling about that particular car, about that particular brand. It resonates with you. You associate yourself with it so that when you do get in market for buying a car, you're going to think about it first. Advertisers who spend millions of dollars on a 30-second Super Bowl ad, did they get their money's worth? Autotrader.com, you can go there. You can check out all the cars that you saw during the game, and you can see the spots themselves. We have an area 
We have all the spots there and you can vote for your favorites, a little thumbs up, thumbs down and see how they're performing with other consumers. Thanks John for joining us this morning with this ad wrap up after the game. Today's experts offered valuable information on how to gain stick to -itiveness. If you work hard at your goals, you will gain the self-confidence to overcome any challenge. From having a healthier lifestyle to creating a lasting smile, you must take the plunge to create that commitment to make your dream come true with a little resolve. Share your resolution with us by posting on our Facebook page at Rosalie Archer or drop us a line at rosaliearchershow.com and tweet us at Rosalie A. See you next week. For the solutions to this show's issues, help you or a loved one? Find shows like this and others on our website at rosaliearchershow.com.